So it's been widely reported in the August 2019 Microsoft Tuesday updates that there are two Wumble exploits being fixed. Wumble exploits being pretty bad really, to be honest, that well, the way it would go is like you would infect one computer and then this computer would look around for more computers to infect. And if it, when it would try and infect those, then yeah, you've got this growing snowball effect. So yes, it's quite an issue and one that's not just entirely isolated to Windows. We've had them in Linux as well. Mirai botnets that spread with uh, poor password protection on the SSH port. Yeah, that happened. Yeah, it's on Windows as well this time, affecting the remote desktop protocol, RDP, port or TCP port 3389 being open to the internet. And that honestly is just a disaster to do. Why enterprises and people would do this? Leaving RTP port open to the internet without any protection or like any isolating to particular IP ranges. It's just beyond me. That's, it's just so bad. And it, uh, yeah, this article mentions about WannaCry from a couple of years ago now that was spread due to RDP being open to the internet. Why would people do that? But anyway, I think there are more Wumble exploits this month, not just two. I reckon there's three, but it's not reported anywhere at all. And I think the place you should be looking is Outlook. There's been a few critical vulnerabilities that are being fixed. Now I'll also stress that these vulnerabilities have been privately disclosed. They're not mentioned as public there, so the vulnerability has been mentioned in private to Microsoft and they are fixing it. So it's not too much of an issue really publicly disclosed vulnerabilities that are the issue. But let's take a little look at this, because if it turns out that this is a Wormbull exploit, well, you heard it here first. So there's a few vulnerabilities to read about in Microsoft Office. So we have CVE-1199, a remote code execution vulnerability exists in Microsoft Outlook when the software fails to properly handle objects in memory. An attacker who successfully exploited the vulnerability could run arbitrary code in the context of the current user. If the current user is logged in with administrative rights, then they could potentially do more damage. And that's just a really bad thing to do. Run the windows with administrative rights. It's actually a bad thing to do in any operating system in general. So exploitation of vulnerability requires that a user open a specially crafted file with an affected version of Microsoft Outlook. In an email attack scenario, the attacker could exploit the vulnerability by sending a specially crafted file to the user and convincing the user to open the file. Yeah, how difficult is that to convince them? You just need to tell them something juicy. Like, uh, oh, what's this historic one here? The Anacornicova computer virus. <laughs> yeah, that didn't do any damage by promising certain nice pictures of Anna Kornikova. We could send them something like, here's an invoice that needs to be paid, here's a project file to open. Yeah, see these things all the time with phishing emails. Note where the severity is indicated as critical, the preview panel is an attack vector. And if we scroll down, is the preview pane an attack vector for this vulnerability? Yes, it is. And there's another one with Word, but yeah, Word is also part of Outlook. And yet yeah, note the Microsoft Outlook preview pane is an attack vector for this vulnerability as well. So it's a remote code execution vulnerability exists in Microsoft Word when it fails to properly handle objects in memory. An attacker who successfully exploited this vulnerability could send a specially crafted file to perform actions in the security context of the current user. So it sounds very similar to the previous vulnerability. So that was CVE 2019-1201. But this one could perhaps be the more critical vulnerability, CV 2019-1204. An elevation of privilege vulnerability exists in Microsoft Outlook. It initiates processing of incoming messages without sufficient validation or formatting of the messages. An attacker who successfully exploits this vulnerability could attempt to force Outlook to load local or remote messages store over SMB. To exploit the vulnerability, the attacker could send a specially crafted email to the victim Outlook would then attempt to open a pre-configured message store contained in email upon receipt. And like the other two vulnerabilities, the preview pane is the attack vector. So you don't actually have to open email properly. You just have to preview it. So I suspect that additional items of Outlook could be interrogated, like the user's address book. And in that way, this could be a Wumble exploit. But hey, we'll see if uh, anyone else picks these things up. 
Anyway, it's not like enterprises would have any obstacles in applying this month's security updates to Microsoft, would they? Oh, only if you're running Windows 7 and semantic endpoint protection. Yeah, SEP doesn't like the new SHA-2 hashing, or the SHA-2 only hashing, which Microsoft have moved to in this month's updates. So if you've got SEP installed on an enterprise system, you're out of luck in installing updates on Windows 7. Although it doesn't affect Windows 10, it's just Windows 7. So let's see what comes of that then. Will we see any more news articles about other wormable exploits for the August updates? Well, thanks for watching. See you later.